Hello, humans, and welcome to another <clears throat> episode of Gen X Gamer, and I pray you forgive my voice here. It's going in and out, and I've been dealing with a voice issue now for almost a month, and um, it looks I'm going to have to make some changes. It has to do with, you know, me having to speak a lot more nowadays with work and family and what have you, <clears throat> so I'm going to have to preserve my voice here in the um, next few days. I might have to use a voice clone or even... Or some AI to <clears throat> help me rest my voice. Specifically for the longer uh, videos. But this one I'm making all my own. But uh, that's coming soon to the channel. Looks like uh, here guys. Um, I'm doing treatment. But it's not, it's not working. And the only real thing that I have to do now is not talk. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Regardless, I wanted to touch on this before I, you know, started um, uh, downshifting here. And it has to do regarding Bungie and their layoffs. Of course, they said there weren't going to be any layoffs um, when they were first acquired, right? And you believe them. Never believe this. Never believe this at your job because layoffs are always coming. And they always happen the same way, guys. When two companies merge, there are bound to be some duplicate assignments some duplicate work, some assignments that could be taken over by, you know, uh, other personnel that are already existing with the other company. And it's very simple. For those of you who are out there, if you're usually in a managerial position, man, you are the first to go. <laughs> and the reason is it's, you know, in a lot of places, very hard to quantify <clears throat> what your work is if you're a manager for example and usually the, just the manager of the, of the parent company will take over some of the duties or an assistant manager in training because they would rather have their people at the helm and find out what's going on in every department now if you are a manager they got to keep their job then they're going to ask you to reduce your workforce Right, And the usually the incentive for that is that you're going to get raised, even though you're going to cut personnel and you're going to have to take on some more responsibilities, you're going to get a raise. And that's why <laughs> a lot of them uh, do cut personnel. You know, usually, you know, it's uh, two to six. You know, if you have for you're going to cut two for every six employees, uh, you know, on a layoff. If it's a merger, it, it might be more, but it's usually two, two and a half per, uh, people per six depending on your um, entity. Now, how do you avoid this, right? What would you do if you find yourself in this kind of situation? Because to me, it's all about the business aspect and what you can learn. Guys, if you are the, the lowest man in the totem pole, let's say you're a worker and you're hearing rumors that your company might get acquired or what have you, the best thing to do is to do whatever your boss doesn't want to do, right? And, and I tell this these people all the time, you know, newcomers to, to any industry, really. But if you're starting off, whenever you go into a job, you want to find out what the hardest job is, what nobody wants to do, and become an expert on that. Because as uh, companies merge or have to do layoffs in these hard times, they always ask people to work lean, right? <laughs> That's the key word. You got to work lean. And what that means is just doing more work for the same amount of pay. Now, when your managers, whoever the decision maker is, whenever they start slashing these jobs, they want to see who they can do without. Now, I'm not going to, you know, even pretend that there isn't people out there that just don't skate through work. You know them. I know them. There's people that just put the minimum effort, you know, into their job, what have you. And everything works great until there's downsizing, right? Because those are the first people to go. It depends on the organization. Some organizations value, you know, the, the tenure of the person, how long they've been there, how senior they are, what have you. And some don't, right? Some are just like, well, this guy's been here 10 years, so he's making, you know, 20% more than everybody else. And he's just skating. So we're going to get rid of him. He's not an essential part of the organization. And one of the cruelest and realest things that uh, I was told one time leaving a a corporation was, uh, you know what difference you make to this company. It's the same difference. I want you to go 
put your hand in that bucket of water over there, stick it in and stick it out. That's the difference you make here or anywhere else. You're not that important unless you're the owner of the company. Anybody can be replaced. And that's true, right? That is true. So you have to give them a, a reason to keep you, right? If you're not an entrepreneur and you don't own your own business and you're trying to make it, you're trying to get that experience, you're trying to level up, as they say, that's the best thing to do. And that will happen here and every time there is a merger, guys, do not. And whenever people tell you there's going to be a merger and there's not going to be any layoffs, that is absurd. That is absolutely not true. <laughs> That's the opposite of why you make a, a merger, right? It's, it's very simple math. When you do a merger, you want to take one plus one and make it equal three, right? And how are you going to do that? The only way to do that is by solidifying your resources, concentrating your, your your firepower, if you will, and just keeping the best of the best, right? And they'll tell you, and there there is opportunity there if you're the ones who stick around, right? Usually, you know, like I said, uh, two out of every six people between you and your boss's job are now gone. And if you're one of those grinders, this is your opportunity to shine, to move up, and maybe in the future, you're going to be the one laid off. <laughs> you're, you're going to be the one that's expendable, right? But in the meantime, you get to make more money. You know, So it really is up to you. Whenever you work in these big corporations that are beholden to stockholders, this is what you have to go through. There is just no ways about it. They do pay more money, but you're always running this risk. Guys, thank you for joining me. I'm going to be working in the next couple of days uh, trying to clone my voice using an AI and trying to use those tools to help me out to make videos, I guess. to Well, not I guess. I know because that's the only way I'm going to be able to put them out. Uh, I'll be mixing both. That's probably the best way to do it. But I really have to just stop using my voice as much as I have. You know, I have to use my voice at work quite a bit. And, you know, I'm just using it ex excessively these past few months. And now I am in the state that I'm in, so I have to do something to fix it. I'm going to go drink a cup of coffee here and uh, hopefully get some videos out to you. I'll be put, putting on some shorts, but I just m wanted to make you aware of what's going on. I'm just dealing with this. It's not getting, getting any better. And the only solution they've given me up to now, besides, you know, the medication, is just stay as quiet as possible. So that is what I'm going to do. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.